over the last four days. We have celebrated healthy, happy dogs with over 22,000 dogs vying for the ultimate honor to be crowned Crafts Best in Show 2017. The moment has arrived. It is an honor and a privilege to welcome you all to the world's greatest dog show and Crafts Best in Show 2017. of the band of Her Majesty's Royal Marines Collingwood under the direction of Major John Ridley, Royal Marines. So that wonderful fanfare welcomes you all to the Crufts 2017 Best in Show ring. Frank Kane joins me here and we're excited to see our finalists again. The scene set positively sparkling here this evening and a wonderful atmosphere in the arena tonight a packed house for the climax of Crufts 2017 group judges standing there behind the boards to welcome their winners once again we are delighted to welcome our Crafts Best in Show Judge 2017, Mr. Jeff Horswell. So here comes Jeff Horswell, whose job it is to sort out the seven group finalists and award Crufts Best in Show. An honour indeed, Frank. And he's the youngest judge for the, for the last 48 years. Uh, he's been showing dogs since he was a schoolboy, widely judge experienced. Here on Thursday evening. The winner of the Terrier Group. And here they the come, Lakeland the Terrier. first of our group winners sent forward from the Terrier Group, the Lakeland Terrier. Very composed and confident doing its first lap round the ring. Champion Saradon Enigma. Just 20 also months old, so a real youngster. And from the West Midlands, so not had far to travel. And from the Hound Group, my own breed, this, the Grand Basset Griffon Vendian, Frosty Stoma, Snowman, another, just two years old, a youngster. And this one's from the Netherlands, so it has travelled a long way to win here. There's our utility group winner. It's the miniature poodle. It's come from Blackburn, Melanie Harwood, handling her own dog. She's third generation of poodle breeders. Her mother and her grandmother before her had the breed. Also just here on Friday night. It's going to be a rather longer way round. Now, the second of our group winners from Friday's competition, the toy group winner, this, the Yorkshire Terrier, my precious JP Kagayaki. And this is from Japan, so we've uh, had a wonderful experience of their first visit here. Well, hopefully she's recovered from her jet lag, because in group competition on Friday, the poor little Mike was quite jet lagged and kept falling asleep. crowds here on International Day on Super Saturday. The winner of the Gun Dog Group. There's the Gun the Dog Group winner, the American Cocker, a tricolour, and this has come from Blackpool, from the famous Afterglow Kennel, and handled here by Jason Lynn, his co-owner. 
Very stylish and confident, and he's a clever handler. He's won a best in show here with a standard poodle just a few years ago. We've seen them judged here tonight on the fourth now and final the, day. Now, for the first of our two groups judged this evening, so of the course, difficult of for these two. dogs. They've had the to come hot foot from group, group competition. Big dogs without much time to have a rest. This, the Newfoundland champion, Mary Bear d'Artagnan, still looking fresh as a daisy. From a famous kennel in Southampton, it's uh, Paddy Galvin, one of the co-owners handling. Co-owns him with Gordon Cutts. And to make the magnificent seven complete, the winner of the pastoral group, the old and English the last Sheikon. of our finalists from the pastoral group judge not 45 minutes ago the spectacular old English sheepdog and another long distance traveler from Greece so in a big big crowd pleases tonight huge cheer when this came into the ring both for the group and here for best in show such a super mover this one And uh, first look down the line, full of concentration, Jeff. Lights up now, so he can have a, a proper look at his Lakeland Terrier winner. And beautiful coat. The lovely colours of the Yorkshire Terrier, steel blue and tan, three shades of tan on the face. The American Cocker, sloping top line in beautiful coat. The sturdy, clean lines of the Newfoundlands and that special top line of the old English sheepdog, a rise over the loin. Now the table's been brought out for the first closer look at the first of our group winners. Champion Saradon Enigma, Allen, just 20 months old, handled by John Averis. It's from a very famous kennel in the West Midlands. They've had a best in show here with a Welsh Terrier a few years ago. He's second gener third generation of a breeder of Terriers. And although this is a vulnerable breed, still a spectacular show dog here as one of our seven finalists. And looking, looking perfection tonight in this wonderful coat. The, the gr grizzle, the mixture of black and tan hairs, and the rich tan on the legs and the face. They're a sturdy breed, essentially a working terrier, developed in the Lake District, Westmoreland and Cumbria, and uh, can go to ground work in packs or singly. And of course, terriers with this careful grooming sculpted coat they make such wonderful show dogs because of their attitude just look at that tail cranked up and always full of confidence a wonderful top line the tail set bang on top and these powerful hind quarters driving it along that's our terrier group winner alan Very composed there, but right on his toes and just looking at his squeaky toy. That's his favorite. Now we have the Grand Basset Griffon Vendien that won the Hound Group, Frosty Snowman. Belongs to Phil Reed and Gwen Heikershoven, who's handling him, having brought him from the Netherlands to compete today. He's won multiple best in shows in Europe. This should be a, a rugged, rustic country dog. You don't want too much heavy preparation with this breed. Slightly longer than he is tall, and that noble head, so important. Uh, the name Basset in his name, in his title, means lower station because he was actually bred down from a much taller dog called the Grand Griffon Vendien. This one's a tricolour. And like all scent hounds, he's naughty as anything off the lead. You'll let him off, and three and a half hours later, you'll still be waiting for him to come back from the hunt. And certainly the first of his breed to win the group at Crufts, Jessica. He is. Friday. 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 Here in 
And now the sculptured outline of the miniature poodle who won the utility group. They're bred down from duck retrievers. Beautifully elegant, long chiseled head, almond shaped dark eyes. But underneath the coat, the judge is looking for good construction, good shoulders and chest, which he's feeling now. They should be well ribbed, they should have substance under that coat. And, and this is the middle size of the three, the standard, of course, taller, and the toy poodle, the tiniest of them. This is Frankie, two years old. And we were talking earlier about how some breeds lend themselves more to winning at this top level. And you can understand why with the poodles in these spectacular trims and with their attitude, which is so outgoing, such big characters, they make fantastic show yes, dogs. Yes, the poodle is the ultimate show dog. They, they love the big ring. They lo love to move out with style, as this one is doing here, and rises to the applause. The most intelligent, affectionate animals, poodles, and therefore, of course, respond to the kind of experienced handling that Melanie this, has. This makes a dramatic outline, a short back and a long neck, and this tail carried erect. It makes a very pleasing picture. Light, light action, very stylish. Now, this the Yorkshire Terrier, my precious J.P. Kagayaki, an international champion, come all the way from Japan to compete here. And we see there the beautiful three shades of tan on the head, deeper at the roots, fading to paler gold. And that body coat should be steel blue and a silky texture. The Yorkshire Terrier coat should, should be cold to the touch, and that tells you it's a good texture. The judge just looking, working with his brush to see that the, the colour is correct, that the tan doesn't run into the blue. <laughs> the expression on that dog's face, fantastic. What are you doing <laughs> grooming me today? So they're quite used to that, though. Every judge does it in the ring, a specialist judge. And, of course, the Yorkshire Terrier originally a ratter and a very useful little dog and still retains that terrier temperament yeah, that gives them a, an edge in the show ring. Bred down from black and tan terriers with perhaps some sky terrier there and they retain the terrier temperament. Huddersfield Ben, the dog at 1865 in Huddersfield, working in the mills and he was a ratter and he's credited to be the forefather of the breed. He'd be very proud of this one, I'm sure. And this little this little person won best in um, best in breed uh, best of breed at the Westminster in uh, America's prestigious Crufts yes. equivalent we, we, just a month ago. So very well travelled. We have had a best in show winning Yorkshire Terrier at Crufts uh, about 20 years ago. In, and in fact, th th this one's related to it. All ah, right. And very nice movement. Look, those parallel legs coming through the coat. It shows it's soundly constructed. It's not just about glamour. They have to be well constructed and they have to have breed type. Now, this the winner of the Gun Dog Group, the American Cocker Spaniel, show champion Afterglow Miami Inc. Just two years old. Sent through by Ken Sinclair, owned by Jason Lynn and Rudy De Silva. Jason's handling in the ring. Now, now the American Cocker is developed from the same stock as the English Cocker. We, uh, famous dog Obo was exported to America in, in the 19th century, and the American breeders bred them rather differently. They developed this shorter head, a sloping top line, and this more luxurious coat different body shape as well it's a short shorter head and a sloping top line which we'll see carried on the move and the shape of that head not just the shorter muzzle but that that curvaceous skull it's a more rounded skull but look at the free striding action here they are again great show dogs they love the big ring they can stride out and make a wonderful picture look at the sloping top line the high set tail perfectly carried this one a tricolor and in marvelous bloom for the best in show ring this evening he was bred in the famous afterglow kennel near blackpool have had a lot of winners here including a best in show winning poodle Packed yet again here at France, 20. 
Now here we have the winner of the working group, the Newfoundland champion, Mary Bear D'Artagnan, Bentley, three and a half year old dog, owned by the Chapmans and Paddy Galvin handling in the ring this evening. Of course, these are a water dog bred in northeastern Canada where they used to work with fishermen, pulling the fishermen's carts, even pulling in the boat sometimes. And in the early settlement, they helped uh, the lumberjacks by pulling logs from the forest. So utilitarian. Of more recent years, they're well known for being rescue dogs, saving people from water. And I've even seen one jump out of a helicopter into the sea to, to drag someone to safety. That's remarkable. And they love water. And although this is a large, heavy bone dog, we need balance here, don't we, Frank? We need smoothness on the move, on the move, maintaining that top line, striding out. And we'll see a little bit of roll in the top line. And this breed, that is correct. It comes from the big barrel ribs they have under that coat. And that coat is slightly greasy and oily to the touch to give it a waterproof quality. Our working group winner, the Newfoundland. Now, here we come to the last of our seven finalists coming from the pastoral group, the instantly recognisable outline, square as a box of the old English sheepdog. And our judge, look at the dentition, which is a feature of uh, judges. They have to have correct dentition for the breed. Again, feeling under the coat. This, this is a breed which, again, has big ribs, a slight rise over the loin. The judge examining the shoulders and strength of bone and feeling the depth of chest. It's not all about glamour and hairdressing. They were functional breeds and underneath that they have to be equipped to do a job of work. They're called Old English Sheepdogs. It shows you their original work. But they also were herders of cattle too. Get strong head, a very strong head and strong. It always looks face. large, doesn't it, in proportion to the rest of the body. It has to look large for the for the for the dog, yes. And that crisp, crisp textured coat, blue with white markings. This is the crowd favourite, without a doubt, I think, tonight. And, and look at that movement coming towards you. They always say you want the movement to be parallel. This is dead parallel, those uh, huge feet reaching well forwards. Such a good move of this And the one. other thing I like about this dog, he really uses his hocks on the move, and that's where the power of movement comes from, from the dog's back legs, from his hocks. He's very strong there. A wonderful stride, absolutely clean coming in its action and a broad chest. That's a lovely, lovely dog. So Jeff Horswell has had a chance to have his hands on all seven of our finalists for the first time. Just taking another look at those outlines, reminding himself before he'll move them again. I think he's giving the handlers instructions. He's going to send them round, looking at them in profile movement. Here we go. There goes the little Lakeland Terrier. They're shorter striding than a lot of the other breeds. Very composed performance, great carriage. And he's the freer striding, Grand Bassy. Perfect tail carriage, like a sabre, with that proud head and again, carried nobly. And an excellent top line, an indication of balance. And he's the style of the miniature poodle. What carriage, what confidence. All poodle, in type and temperament. And here goes the little Yorkshire Terrier from the toy group. Not to be outdone, he may be the smallest, but he's strutting his stuff with great confidence and style. Lovely colours and a lovely top line. Kicking out with those powerful hocks from behind. Great drive, this American Cocker Spaniel. Look at the reach in front Thanks. there. Very important. And again, a favourite of the crowd is the Newfoundland. They're great characters, and I think people know that. They're a wonderful breed. Of course, our commentator, Peter Purvis, is devoted to this breed. He's had several of them. 
and here goes the old English again. Of course, remember, the stands are crammed with people who've been here today for the working and pastoral breeds, so they're inevitably going to favour those last two competitors. So now, the podium's come out. Well, decision time for our judge, Jeff Horswell. He's a very decisive judge, knows what he likes, and I think uh, he'll have a fairly good idea, but he's just checking the finer details now. Here come the Rostra. Where's your money, Jessica? Oh, goodness me, I have to say, you're I should be supporting my own breed through and through, but that's a, a, a two-edged coin because sometimes <laughs> popularity can be very difficult to handle with a rarer breed like that. Tonight on performance, I think that old English sheepdog's a cracker. And perhaps, uh, yes, I, I agree, he looks marvellous, he's gone beautifully. The American Cocker went very well as well. So did the Poodle. So did the Poodle. There we are, look. It's the American Cocker Spaniel. Uh, that's remarkable. The Afterglow Kennel, just a few years ago, winning with a standard Poodle, and now with the American Cocker. Afterglow Miami Inc. Wonderful achievement for them. They have had reserve best in show here before with an American Cocker, but this is a new height for them. And reserve best in show goes to the miniature poodle from the utility group, Melanie Harwood, with Minaret's best kept secret. But we now know we have our Crufts best in show winner for 2017, and it's that glorious American Cocker Spaniel. Well, Jason Lynn, he'll be, he's been here before. He's a wonderful handler. He always makes the best of the dogs, and here's another great victory for him. So now we've got the trophy presentation party. Mr. Matthias Schiller, the managing director of Ukanuba Europe. Simon Luxmore Ball, who's the chairman of the Kennel Club. Annalisa Riki, managing director of Ukanuba in the UK. And of course, Gerald King, the chairman of Crufts. And just look at the size of that magnificent Kettle Memorial Trophy. From the Lancashire, and handled, of course, by Jason Lynn. Congratulations. <laughs> That's a delightful shot. Miami looks like he's just yeah. taking an ordinary yeah. stride, doesn't know what all the fuss is and about. still a relatively young dog, only two years of age. So uh, he's had a good career so far. And this is the crowning glory. Melanie Harwood there with her miniature poodle. Frankie taking reserve, best in show. And two young handlers and breeders achieving the crown of, the, you know, in their sport. And of course, she's won the group here before. So, as Frank said, three generations of poodle breeders breeding well out. Claire Balding is now with us to interview our champion, Bested Show. Ladies and gentlemen, I know how much you've appreciated the magnificent lineup of seven dogs for Best in Show, but let's have a quick word with Jason here and get a closer look at Miami and say, well done to you, you're Crufts champion. He's a bit of a star. <laughs> well, big star now. Uh, yeah, he, he's pretty special. And uh, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm speechless. I'm absolutely shocked and thrilled. You've been here before with Ricky the Standard Poodle. Does it help to have been in the situation or was it even worse nerve-wise tonight? Uh, I think it probably helped. This is kind of um, a really special place to be. And um, of course, I think having been here a few years ago maybe prepared me for, for all the noise and all the excitement. How would you sum up the American Cocker Spaniel as a breed and indeed Miami is an example of it? Uh, well, the American Cocker is the smallest of all the gun dogs, and uh, in the breed standard, it talks about the merry temperament, and temperament is really something that's probably the hallmark of the breed, this happy wagging tail and um, this charisma. 
Well, you've done a magnificent job handling him. He is a wonderful dog as well. I just want to say a quick well done to Melanie as well and say hello to Frankie, the miniature poodle. Reserve is a good result, isn't it? It's a fantastic result. I mean, that was a wonderful lineup of dogs, and I'm thrilled for Jason to get Reserve. I'm speechless. <laughs> Well, you've done a brilliant job, and look at him. He's got bags of personality, both of them have. But our Crufts champion, ladies and gentlemen, for 2017, let's send him and the reserve champion on their way. And your applause once again for show champion Miami Inc., the American Cocker Spaniel, best in show for Crufts 2017, and Frankie, the miniature poodle, who is our reserve champion. So there we have it. The decision has been made. We have our beautiful American Cocker Spaniel Crufts Best in Show winner for 2017 Miami with Frankie the Miniature Poodle in reserve. It has been the most fantastic four days of competition. The greatest dog show in the world. There's Mike Gadsby there coming in to congratulate. <laughs> uh, the greatest dog show in the world and so much more. On YouTube, we've had covered all the way through of the action events of everything that's been taking place in these main event rings as well as all the show dogs and of course all that will still be available over the coming days plenty of archive footage everything that's happened this year we very much hope if you've joined us for the first time this year that you'll join us again because that's for sure we will be here to cover Crufts 2018 next year but for now with that wonderful shot of our winners goodbye